All right. Well, before we wrap things up and go to the watch along, two questions from Charlie in Starkville, Mississippi. I knew it. Here's his first one. What do you think about Jeff Cobb turning down an AEW contract to join New Japan Pro Wrestling? How much of his decision do you think had to do with the way AEW used him in the one match he had there? Well, I mean, I can't speak for the guy and and his thought process. I don't know him. I've never met him. But it's the proof is in the the nanner pudding. He didn't. They made him an offer he didn't take. He went to Japan. Apparently, he either didn't like his first time in, or he's seen what they've done with other people they brought in there. Hey, if I was any kind of star. And I saw the way that they put Miro on television. I'd be, okay, that's it for me. I'd rather go out in the fucking public maskless and gloveless and take my chances with COVID than take my chances with their booking, putting my career on a ventilator. And Lee, he knows what he's, he knows what he's going to get with Japan. And he knows the style of wrestling they're going to do and, and probably approximately how they're going to treat him. And he figured... I'm safe here. Who knows what the fuck? I'm I'm just explaining to you that you're going to see more and more guys that have never been on TV that just want to get on TV join AEW instead of people that have been on television and had established careers because of the the fucking haphazard way a lot of these people are getting booked. And unless they come in with explicit creative control over their shit and even then as we've seen sometimes when you let the let the boys up to their own devices they're their worst enemies but i'm not surprised i'm not surprised about jeff Cobb. i think AEW really blew it with him he's a guy with a world of potential he's really good and like a feud with him and brian cage would have been fantastic but well i don't know because i'm see that that's two guys that are really thick and it may be it may be a style clash, and then who gets over? Because they ain't got neither. They ain't got Cage over yet, and I don't know if he's experienced enough to take care of himself or not. Taz it's not his fault. Over, but Cage has to have the matches. It's not his fault. He's not over. Let's remember the way he's been booked since he. Well, we don't know yet. There. See, that's the thing. Once, once that we figure out. <laughs> yes it's booking in a lot of these cases with these guys is why we're like what the fuck but then if you book them properly then we have to figure out whether they can do their shit right or not and you can't tell that with a lot of these guys because the booking attracts so much attention for being lousy and everybody here is still in various stages of green so we need to see i but but the the jury's out i don't know a cage and cob would not be a match that I would book simply because who would be the fucking leader who would get over. And are you nullifying each one of their strong points by having guys with similar strong points in there with each other, big, wide, strong bodies where they can throw people around. They look more uh, intimidating and more impressive doing it to other people that don't look the same as them. See what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. And again, I think if one guy was established and had been over for a few years in this program and the other guy comes in, that's one thing, but starting, starting them from pretty much scratch, I'd keep guys like that away from each other for a while. 